GA4 lead gen recommended events. Hey, this is Fred Pike, and I'll be talking about some new recommended events that Google introduced for GA4 for lead gen websites. Let's take a look. As you may know, the single recommended event that Google has had for a long time for lead generation websites has been the generate lead. That's all we've had. There's been so much for e-commerce sites, but almost nothing for lead gen sites. And now there are a whole bunch more events available for lead gen websites. Let's start off with the generate lead, which is really the beginning of the process. In generate lead, you record when something becomes a lead. You know, they may register for a webinar, they may fill out a form, they may do any number of actions on your website that qualify as generating a lead. What's a little bit unusual about the generate lead event and something that I really haven't liked since the beginning is that it's highly structured towards kind of an e-commerce feel in that it requires currency and it requires value. If you didn't put those, if you didn't include those parameters with the generate lead event, instead of becoming a recommended event, it actually became a custom event. But we've lived with that for a while, so let's just say that the value of our lead, in this case, is $30, okay. One thing that Google added recently is this lead source. That wasn't an original parameter when the generate lead came out, but now it's been added. And the big thing, the big change that has happened with all the leads is the items array is now available. And what is the items array? If you work with GA4 e-commerce, you're probably familiar with that. The items array is at the heart of every single GA4 e-commerce event, whether it's view item or add to cart, remove from cart, purchase, etc. All of those have at their heart the items array, and array means that there's more than one thing in it. So you might have one product here, a second product here, and the array defines what parameters you're going to use to send to Google. You have to use either item ID or item name, for example, that's required. All these other parameters are optional. So this makes a lot of sense for an e-commerce store. Does it make as much sense for a lead gen site? I'm not really sure, but regardless, Google didn't ask me. They just said, hey, on these new lead options, we are going to include the items array. And you can see that it has the exact same parameters as the e-commerce items array. So again, Google heavily e-commerce oriented is using that same set of parameters, that same structure for the lead gen sites. So let's take a look at some of the other recommended events that they just added. And the easiest way to do that is probably to search for lead. So you can see we have the generate lead, which really starts the process. And there are one, two, three, four, five other options. So let's take a look at the working lead and kind of go through what the process would look like. The working lead would be a lead has been generated on the website, you've captured that, and then afterwards, either the user contacts somebody at the company or the organization, or somebody from the organization contacts the user. So this event would be used to capture that information. So we've generated a lead, now we're working the lead, and we can say what the lead status is. You can see this is a brand new custom parameter lead status. We did not have this custom parameter before, and you can fill it with whatever you'd like. Start a conversation, talk to the end user, whatever you want to say. The next thing is probably going to be qualify the lead, hopefully. They generated the lead by doing something on your website. You talk to them. Now you're going to qualify it, and you're going to say, yeah, this was a qualified lead. And again, you have the option of using the items array. Notice that you still have these required parameters of currency and value. Alternatively, you've talked to them and you've realized, hey, they're really not a qualified lead. I'm gonna disqualify them. And now you have another custom parameter, disqualified lead reason, and you can put whatever you want in here for the reason. So you can see that with these features, Google is beginning to build a funnel 
generate the lead, contact the person, qualify or disqualify the person. And if they're qualified, then ultimately we're going to get to either close and unconvert them or close and convert them. So an unconvert means, hey, they weren't a lead, they didn't become a prospect, they didn't become a customer, they were unconverted for some reason. Again, notice this new parameter here. Highly recommend that you use that if you're gonna do this. Or closed, in which case they actually became a customer, presumably. So Google is trying to let you build a funnel for your lead generation sites. Now let's look at this again a little bit more closely, just for a second. Generate lead is an event that is gonna happen on the website. They fill out a form, for example. Everything else, all these other lead types, the working lead, the qualify, disqualify, that's really gonna happen in general offline. That's not gonna happen on the website itself. So you may have to send offline conversion information to Google using the measurement protocol. So as rich as these additional recommended events are, they're probably not ones that you are going to record on the website while the visitor is there. They're all gonna be recorded offline and sent to GA4 using the measurement protocol. And the measurement protocol is really, really powerful, but it's way beyond what I wanted to cover in this little segment. So just know that if you're gonna use any of these additional recommended events, you're probably going to have to do some offline conversion tracking and sending that into GA4, presumably from your CRM. So that's it for this little segment on the new lead generation recommended events from Google. I'm Fred Pike. We'll see you next time.